Welcome to the Global Business Insights interview series sponsored by Loyola Marymount University's Center for International Business Education. I'm Charles Vance. I'm a professor in the College of Business Administration at Loyola Marymount University. And we are very pleased today to have with us uh, for a, a, an interview, Amy L. Gratt, who is currently Chief Executive Officer of EXP. She's uh, held this position for 10 years now. Amy has an MBA with uh, University of Southern California and a Master's of International Affairs at George Washington University. She has significant experience in developing and ad administering international business education programs. She's very, very active in leadership roles and various activities in numerous civic and industry organizations including the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, World Trade Week, uh, World Trade Week Committee, and the Southern California Roundtable, among several others. Uh, Amy, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. If you could uh, start off, uh, tell us what does EXP stand for? EXP was formerly known as the International Trade Education Programs. So what does EXP stand for? Tell us about the uh, goals and objectives of EXP and, and some of the activities. Thank you so much, Professor Vance. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today. And many thanks to Marky as well for uh, making it possible. Uh, I first had the pleasure to meet her uh, at one of EXP's internship workshops where she gave a fantastic presentation on LMU's business school and the CIBE program. So uh, already, even before this uh, interview, uh, the influence and, and the connection uh, helping to introduce young people to careers in global areas uh, already had begun. So you ask about EXP, and, um, and in many ways, EXP isn't an acronym that stands for something. It's the root of everything that we're about. Experiences that open students' eyes to new career opportunities, exploration of, of career pathways and jobs, and of course, expanded potential that comes from the mix of skills and confidence that students have as a result of our programs. So EXP, that's what we are, we're the Opportunity Engine. We used to, as you say, uh, be called International Trade Education Programs, and that does speak to our roots uh, that were 20 years ago founded in the Port of Los Angeles and the harbor and the maritime community. And even though today, uh, we're working with 10 different high schools across greater Los Angeles and even into Orange County and up into the high desert. Our heart really still is in the harbor in terms of our mission. And our mission is to prepare students for success in school, career, and life. And the way we do that is we engage the industry, the business, the community in the classroom to help connect the dots between what the students are learning say in a curriculum and how it can be applied into a career. Okay, what are some of the uh, major activities that you're currently engaged in in uh, Southern California? So we are really an on the ground partner with the high schools that we serve. We are an embedded uh, companion to the curriculum. So. 20 years ago, when we first got our start at the Phineas Banning High School in Wilmington, where we helped the school develop an international trade curriculum and an academy called the International Trade Academy. So think of this as a school within a school that really puts a laser focus on a particular academic theme and then the careers associated with that theme what the school needed from us then and what they still need from us today 
is to bring in all the experiences, the opportunities, specifically related to making students more aware of the careers in that pathway. So mentors, guest speakers, job shadow days, and then my personal favorite, and the thing that I think really makes the difference for all of the students, internships. So 20 years ago, we were on the ground in the classroom, helping the teachers at Banning High School. 20 years later, we're still doing that. And we don't do this alone. We work with over 400 industry volunteers. Marky was one of them that day. She came and represented LMU because post-secondary institutions are just as important as that future employer out there because we're helping the students see the path to get to where they want to go. So that's what we do. We are on the ground in the schools with the help of industry. So what percentage would you say of the students that you serve are of the kind of the we call underprivileged or less served category? Um, I would say, you know, every school is slightly different, but, um, you know, they define a socioeconomic disadvantage uh, in terms of free and reduced lunch. And we are at least 80% uh, working with students who are 80% uh, free and reduced lunch. As well, the academies and pathways that we specifically support for a student to be enrolled in that particular academy, they need to be recommended and have exhibited some element of being at risk, whether attendance or GPA or socioeconomic. So I would go as far as to say almost 100% of the kids we work with are dealing with incredible obstacles and hurdles, whether they be poverty or whether they be trauma in their communities, or whether they really just be a, a kind of an underdeveloped academic uh, muscle that they weren't able to really build in their primary school days. What evidence do you have that EXP actually, over your tenure uh, with EXP, uh, has, has made a difference with this particular group? Well, the, uh, the, the first thing happens in graduation rates. You know, since we've been at Banning High School for 20 years, we've watched the school graduation rate raise from about 40% to now 80%. I mean, really a double. Now, I'd love to be able to claim credit that, you know, it was all ITEP, now EXP that did it. But the reality is, is we're part of that lifting tide that will raise the boats. The students that are involved in the academies that we support on campus, their graduation rate is usually between five and 10% higher than their peers. And I mentioned the internship. When you do an EXP internship, your graduation rate goes up to 97%. It's, wow. it's, it's, a, it's a motivator. They, they get it. Yeah, the, the internships are so critical for, for all students. And I can, I can see, especially through your activities uh, that result in placements of students in these internships, that to me itself is a, a clear indication of making a difference, making those connections that otherwise would not be there. Yeah, that, when we think about what, what a student is gaining in an internship, and you know, we believe uh, it's an equity issue to ensure that all of our students are paid for their internship because not everybody can afford to take a summer to you know, just do something for their own edification. Our kids sometimes are often handing their paycheck over to help with the rent. So paid internship is key but what they gain on top of that is a social capital that is something that they're going to be able to build upon for the rest of their careers it's that network that is your net worth and very oftentimes the internship is the very first time that a young person at age 16 or 17 has ever really interacted with an adult other than a parent or family member and a teacher so that internship is a passage to growth and it's a ticket to success. 
So how many of these internships uh, are involve some kind of international uh, business, even though they may not go abroad, but they're in businesses that do, uh, uh, do, do international activity? The majority. Um, because the bulk of our programs are serving students in the LA Harbor area and South Bay, what we would call the trade gateways, and we do know this is the number one customs district in the country, and 43% of all of the cargo comes through our San Pedro Bay. So the high schools and the students and frankly the employers and our partners that are in these geographies, um, many of them are connected to those one in nine jobs that relate to international trade. Last year we had COVID impact our internship program so we only were able to place 94 students. Uh, we were on track to place 200 before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. But even amongst those 94, um, Ports America, uh, the Marine Exchange, uh, we had uh, some freight forwarders. The international trade community gets it. And they also recognize that they need to invest in their future talent pipeline because, frankly, these are the industries, these are the jobs that are high wage, high growth, but oftentimes they get overlooked. I mean, the joke about logistics is that it only, you only see it when it's not happening, right? Or when you're in a global pandemic and you can't get your toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So that is a that is definitely the the um, cluster and and the community that we go to again and again. So, and as, go ahead. No, uh, so you're 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 convinced that these companies that are partners that are very much involved with these internships are doing this not just for their social kind of a sense of responsibility, but actually they are looking for their future talent source? We, we interview or we survey uh, our employers every year. And that's the question we ask them at the top of our list. Uh, you know, why is it that you do it? And uh, it, it is interesting because uh, the two top, the two top are, I want to make a difference in the life of a young person. And then the second one is, I want to connect with my future workforce. So it's not one thing. And, and, and I think a mistake uh, is, is to approach companies and ask them for support only based on one thing, whether it be the heartstrings or the ROI. Because as we all know, um, universities and corporations are made up of individuals. And that person who's going to really have the greatest impact on a young person is that individual who steps out of their daily life of, of a job or a career and takes that moment to kind of open up the window and that door to allow a young person to really see in. So if we aren't able to make them feel good about it, and then they tell their supervisors and their marketing department, and, and they make the case that, hey, you know, this is meaningful work. It means something to me. Uh, it also means something to our company. So our biggest allies in terms of the company's uh, uh, first point of touch to, to reach out to us to engage oftentimes is the HR department. And it's, and it's on two levels. It's the talent pool, but also they want to be able to provide meaningful volunteer experiences for their employees because this generation, the millennials, they, they want more than a paycheck. They want impact and meaning and EXP is truly glad to help them make that happen. Yeah, you, you've described that beautifully, I think. It's not really a separation of they're doing it just for the talent and the, uh, for their, their future, but uh, especially for their own employees, seeing that they're making a difference in these young people's lives 
uh, makes their work much more meaningful, much greater likelihood that they're going to remain with the organization that they see is, is making a difference in the lives of other people, while at the same time attracting real talent to the organization. So I, I really like your, your description of a very integrated kind of, of, uh, of activity. I'm curious, uh, uh, so do you keep in touch with alums of EXP and have them engaged in, in your activities? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that has been my passion uh, since I've been in the CEO role for the last 10 years is, is to track like where are they now and how can we bring them back? Because the best advocate for a young person is somebody who is in their shoes and, and, and somebody to whom they can relate. Uh, and what better person than a rising star at Long Beach Container Terminals? You know, one of our, one of our young women who graduated from Banning High School in the Global Safety and Security Academy, went on to Cal Maritime. Many of our students uh, from the Harbor area have, have created a direct channel to the California Maritime Academy and, and are then coming back into the Harbor area and working in the maritime trade mm -hmm. industry right here in our backyard. But Sandra, you know, she graduated, uh, I think 2011, went to college, came back, has got this fantastic supervisor job at Long Beach Container Terminal and is, and is a, a dedicated volunteer to speak to students, particularly to young women, that there are opportunities in maritime. And, you know, it's not just a, you know, big burly guy, you know, lashing the, 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 the container or lashing the, the cargo. No, I mean, it's a, it's a, a highly technical, um, highly analytical people position to be, say, a, a, a superintendent in a terminal. And the kids, the young ladies, you know, their eyes light up, say, I can do that. And, uh, and for the communities that we work with, when she says, well, I graduated from college, I had an offer in hand within the month, and I was making almost $100,000, that gets their wow. eyes lit up. But we, we definitely encourage our alumni to come back as volunteers, uh, to take our interns when they have the ability, and they donate as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been very, very interesting and just uh, so exciting about what, what uh, EXP is doing. But to, in an overall kind of statement, besides other accomplishments, how is EXP helping American businesses become much more competitive in the global marketplace? Absolutely. Well, American businesses have long been concerned about the skills gap. Whether you're in international trade or, or you're in STEM or manufacturing, you know, the disconnect between what you need to be competitive in the global marketplace and what you're getting, uh, that, you know, coming out of our educational system, there continues to be a gap. And I will say that EXP and organizations like ours who are dedicated to being that bridge between industry and education and that, that, that information flows both ways across the bridge. Our partners in global industries, in the global trade companies, you know, they say we need um, workers who have grit and resilience. We need workers who have a global mindset and, and, and they don't need to know INCO terms or, or you know, be able to find the capital of Afghanistan on a map, but they need to have a, a concept that say 95% of, of the world's marketplace is out there outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. We need to have kids or we need to have a workforce that has a degree of critical thinking and communication skills so that they can actually 
do the job and, 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 and you know, survive and thrive. All of those skill sets, whether they be technical or soft skills, are what is created in our internship program. It is what is created in all of the supporting programs that we do along the high school continuum. You're clearly a, a, an important uh, source of, of talent that uh, organizations can really, can really benefit from. Well, Amy, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure to uh, hear from you. And um, I, you certainly have, have made uh, me, and I'm sure those who listen, a, a clear advocate and supporter of AXP. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we welcome anybody who wants to come and get involved. I'm, I got to put in a pitch, right? Uh, yes. If there is uh, an interest in connecting with your future talent pool, we have them. Now, working with high school students is the long game. You know, this is awareness and interest. It's not necessarily going to be somebody who can, you know, drop in to be uh, on your team tomorrow. But, you know, it's happening sooner and sooner. Uh, we've had a number of students every year who do our summer internship between junior and senior year and then go right back in and start working for that company in their senior year and beyond. And that has been particularly true with our 3PLs, logistic companies, freight forwarders, those who, you know, can, can harness the talents of a young person early on and then as they add their education in, can help them grow with the company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they uh, may uh, continue to, to go to school full-time or part-time while, while being employed by the company. Absolutely. You know, big logistics companies like UPS and FedEx um, and where we're located when I'm not working from home, Houston Logistics, they really invest in their um, employees. And it's, um, you know, it's, I think it's a good corporate policy to be continually building your talent pool and nurturing that pool. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you, Charles. It's a pleasure to support CIBE and LMU. All right.